Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever time of day it is. I think I've had like seven cups of coffee today, so I'm really wired and jittery, and I kind of wanted to talk to you about coffee. So, interesting thing about coffee is that it's a controlled substance, meaning it's a drug, caffeine specifically, and it's actually specific a specifically a class 2 controlled substance or class 2 drug depending on whatever type of terminology you prefer um, and that's the same classification as nicotine basically they know that it's narcotic and they're selling it over the counter knowing kind of all the effects of it that's cool like coffee caffeine they're pretty useful anyway most cultures all over the world have always used some sort of caffeinated plant based drink or food source. The guarana plant, you grind down the seeds and you can have a guarana seed caffeine pill, basically. Chocolate has caffeine and most people don't realize that either. It's caffeine in a lot of things that you probably just don't realize and it's really not that big of a deal because caffeine's not super dangerous for you. There was a huge controversy for a long time that coffee was dangerous and you should just stop drinking coffee because it's going to give you heart disease and it's gonna give you cancer and it's gonna do this and it's gonna do that. Well, the truth behind it giving you cancer, it's a very high possibility solely because it is a carcinogen in that when you roast a coffee bean, you are more or less turning it into a charcoal version of the coffee bean, and then you grind it down and then you filter the water through it and you drink the coffee. So you're drinking kind of like coffee flavored charcoal water. That doesn't sound appetizing, but it's delicious anyway, and you know, it, it is what it is. They've done a lot of studies to kind of like prove all of those kind of theories wrong. While it can actually give you cancer in excess, like too much of a good thing will kill you, period. Too much water will kill you, too much sunlight will kill you, like too much sleep will kill you, not enough sleep will kill you, like just moderation on everything, that's kind of the key. Caffeine specifically is stimulating, it's energizing, it can actually clear your mind um, and improve your motor skills. It kind of prevents cancer. Um, it's full of antioxidants. So if you know anything about antioxidants, then basically that knocks free radicals out of your body and that reduces your risk of cancer. It doesn't give you any reason to go out and drink 12 venti Starbucks today because that will give you a heart attack. It can be used to prevent blood clots. It can also be used, um, found recently in studies, to protect against Parkinson's disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, and different liver diseases, cirrhosis, cancers, and it's got a whole multi multitude of uses like outside of just your body. Um, but before I get into that, then let's talk about some of the bad things that coffee can actually do. It is addictive. Too much coffee, you notice, like, it makes you jittery, especially if you haven't eaten anything. It's good to, like, drink water, at least a glass of water for every one to two glasses of coffee that you have. Sorry, mugs or cups, whatever type, however you drink your coffee. Too much caffeine can actually make you really cloudy-minded, like, foggy, like, hazy. It can really screw with your cognition. We already talked about the cause, you know, can cause cancer in excess. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. While caffeine can actually be used to help increase the efficacy of, like, aspirins and NSAIDs that you take if you get a headache, it can actually cause headaches, again, if you overdose or misuse the drug. And it also increases your stomach acidity, especially if you don't... Uh, upkeep your vitamin D and your calcium intake um, and stomach acidity in excess can actually lead to things like ulcers and then eventually like bleeding bowels so it's smart to just be aware of what you're eating and what you should eat to kind of counteract what you are ingesting caffeine in excess or too late in the day will keep you from sleeping there are some cases with like attention deficit disorders, especially the attention deficit hyperactive disorder, that the effects of caffeine are kind of flipped, but even if that person with ADD or ADHD drinks a cup of coffee an hour or two before bed and is able to fall asleep, just 
they're not going to have a really sound, like, restful sleep. Mainly because it does affect the activity and especially, like, specifically the hyperactivity of the body. And therefore the brain and your subconscious is kind of fighting your conscious mind because your conscious mind is still kind of awake and like doing its whole jittery thing like I'm awake on coffee but not really because I'm kind of sleeping and you've got your subconscious mind just kind of like stabbing through like please let me like just do what I need to do like you need to dream and you've just got this like battle of consciousness and subconscious and it's really pretty much just because like you're over caffeinated um, so, good rule of thumb is to not drink or ingest anything caffeinated after 5 p.m. Better rule of thumb is 5 to 6 hours before you normally get ready for bed. Not when you go to bed, but when you get ready for bed. That way you're not still so amped and jittery while you're going through your bedtime routine and you're not gonna get into bed and thinking oh my god I forgot to do this and that and the other thing because you're still amped on caffeine whether or not you're amped like you've had a glass of coffee your mindset has been altered like you're on a drug it also seeps calcium and vitamin D from the bones which go back to the high stomach acidity um, so if you do drink coffee or ingest caffeine um, any way, shape, or form on a even somewhat regular basis, then it's really intelligent to just maybe take a calcium and or vitamin D supplement. And if you're taking a vitamin D supplement, it's good to know that you should also take a D3 supplement because D3... In kind of the simplest way that I know how to describe it is like the essential oil of a bone. If you like squeeze down a bone, it could squeeze out any kind of oil, it's, that's what's in the bone. And the vitamin D3 helps to absorb um, the D and the calcium into the bone better than water would. It's, I don't really know how they make vitamin D3, but just I, I, it's just how it works. As far as health benefits go off of coffee, or caffeine specifically, I keep saying coffee, but I'm talking about caffeine today, is if you get headaches, it's not going to hurt you to just take an aspirin with a cup of coffee. It's going to open up the veins. It's a, it's a vasal dilator. So where your veins and your all of your blood flow mechanisms in your brain or in your brain stem, sometimes they just they close up. and that's why some people get those headaches, just wherever you get headaches. And as soon as you take an aspirin, then it kind of opens up those veins. It dilates the veins. And if you added a cup of coffee to that aspirin, you're going to get a little bit more natural blood flow. Maybe even some extended, like, not-so-natural blood flow, but that's really going to help, like, push blood and the fluids in and out of your brain and kind of help ease that headache so much more especially if you get migraines like have a cup of coffee or just a like, little like shot of like light coffee because I know that caffeine or whatever it can really agitate migraines um, I used to get them it's, I have my eyebrow pierced and that kind of cured them I think um, it was for an acupuncturist which is an interesting story but it's just kind of a I don't know decent thing to keep around the house even if you don't drink coffee on the regular basis like it's medicine like if you are constipated or stuck up like and you're just not doing so good in your bowels drink a cup of coffee I guarantee you it's gonna loosen you up within a couple of hours at the very most it's better than like oh what do they call it smooth move x lags x lags it's also really good for the skin, and basically if you're going to use it for your skin, the caffeine um, directly applied to the skin is going to give you kind of a brighter complexion because it pulls the blood flow towards the skin. Your skin is a porous substance, which means that anything you put on your skin, you're absorbing into your body. Um, a lot of people don't realize that anything you put onto your skin, you just it's going to become a part of you. So like essential oils, if you put them on your skin, you are literally ingesting or absorbing the lymph or the immune system of that plant, that essential oil, 
into your own immune system, into your own bloodstream. But if you're going to use it cosmetically as any type of exfoliator or scrub, I highly, highly recommend running it through a coffee grinder at very least until you have a powder. You're going to want to mix it, you know, with water or whatever, and it's not going to get all gooey like flour because it doesn't have gluten in it. Basically, the reason for that is it's going to smooth down the particles. Otherwise, if you just rub rough coffee grinds all over your face or all over your skin or body, like, it's going to leave, at very least, like, micro abrasions or micro scars that will eventually, you know, show themselves or rear their ugly little heads a little later in life. If you look at coffee grounds under a microscope or even just, like, in your eye, like, they're really sharp. They're razor, they're jagged edges. So, just, if you don't have a coffee grinder, Go to a used goods store, an ARC, a Goodwill, a, a disabled vet's thrift store, whatever you have in your area. I've seen them sold for like seven, I'm sorry, anywhere from two to like seven dollars. Just get a coffee grinder. Like, you don't need anything fancy. Caffeine is really good for um, treating hemorrhoids. And hemorrhoids is something that the majority of Americans have, whether or not we want to admit it. And even further, there's some Americans, there are some sufferers of hemorrhoids who have them so far into their bodies that they're actually past the first sphincter in their bowels. Um, and it causes a lot of medical conditions long term. I know that shark liver oil and the mercury salts were a really good treatment for hemorrhoids, um, specifically in over-the-counter medications like with uh, Preparation H brand specifically. Um, but because of the uh, Shark Protection Act um, imposed a couple or a few years ago, I don't remember the specific, specific date, but the sharks are kind of an endangered species and the only way to obtain shark liver oil aka squalene, is to get it through a prescription. And that's kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, I guess it's kind of a good thing because, like, the sharks are pretty important to the environment, and I guess we've been overfishing them, and we didn't realize it. I didn't realize it until recently. You should actually check up on that. Like, it's a pretty interesting story. Like, sharks are pretty crazy. But digressing, like, we are talking about coffee or caffeine. Actually, we're going to go back to just talking about coffee specifically. Like, as far as what do I do with all of my coffee grounds that are left over in my cup of coffee, save them. Um, throw them into your house plants, throw them into your uh, vegetable gardens, throw them into basically your flower beds. It, it's a fertilizer. Anything that you didn't seep out of the coffee grounds while you were making your coffee, it's going to actually get used up by the plants. And some of the things that are in the coffee that those plants get specifically benefit from is iron, potassium, magnesium, and protein. It's a really low amount of protein, but it's there, and the plants will actually really thank you for it. Really quick about the hemorrhoid thing, if you want to use that as a hemorrhoid treatment, I would recommend making a really, really strong brew of coffee, such as a quarter cup of coffee grounds for anywhere from six to eight ounces of coffee, like water through your system. Let that really strong coffee set to room temperature before you use it as an enema. Otherwise you're going to scald yourself and that's probably going to be the most painful thing you could ever do to yourself. Likewise, you probably don't want it too cold, especially if you suffer from hemorrhoids. Like, it will probably... no, it will cause more hemorrhoids. So just go with room temperature. Um, if you want to go specifically, go with your body temperature, which is 96 point some odd degrees under your tongue and 94 some odd degrees beneath your armpit. You can go ahead and look it up on Google, your rectal temperature, um, if you want to be like Mr. Specific Science Guy, which is actually really recommended. So basically, like in summary on that one, don't put coffee grounds up your booty hole because you're gonna like rip yourself to pieces and cause fissures which are like imagine like your split lip like how those are a little irritating and frustrating sometimes and every time you smile they like rip open and bleed all over the place again imagine that on your little booty hole like and up inside your little booty hole be smart don't put coffee grounds 
inside of you at all. Unless you're adding it to like brownies, that makes really tasty brownies. Just a like tablespoon of fine ground coffee. Another thing that you can do with really strong brewed coffee besides drink it and give yourself a like zzz, buzz, yay crack, like let's do this. You can put it into a spray bottle with some dish detergent if you wanted to or other essential oils if you well, like are targeting specific bugs. Caffeine sprayed onto your garden outside like your tomato plant, your squash plants, your um, herbs, whatever you're growing, it will actually deter the majority of the leaf piercing pests that kind of suck the plants dry and dead and it will actually kill a few of those little pestilent species, but mostly it just kind of like deters them. They, they smell it or they can feel it or they can sense it. However, you know, that specific species of bug is like aware of its surroundings. Caffeine just isn't a really good energy for a lot of flying insects. That really, that actually summarizes everything that I wanted to say about coffee and caffeine. If you have any questions about how you could use coffee or caffeine a little bit further or maybe how to make your own co caffeine supplements because you don't like coffee but you're dragging through the day, please comment down below. You pretty much know the drill. I mean, if you're on YouTube, then like, y you get it. If you like the content, don't hesitate to like and subscribe and please feel free to share the information with your friends and family um as always like i love you you love you like we're all kind of in this game together so peace